Okay, so in the last video we worked through the list node class. This time we're going to look at the list class. Now, uh, just to make it clear that initially in section three we're going to use a list very badly, where we're going to access the first and last node. Um, but then in section four we're going to actually implement the functions which we should use to uh, insert into the list. Remember, this is an unordered list, so we're just going to insert at the front or insert at the back. So we're not going to ins uh, implement an insert function, which would do it in, a, in an ordered manner. So to start off with then, we uncomment section 3 and then look, let's look through this code and work out what we need. Uh, straight away we know, okay, well we need to implement a list class. Now what properties does it have? It has uh, the first node and last node properties, which are both uh, clearly uh, list nodes. And then what function, at the moment, the only function we're going to implement is a toString, which should print out all of the elements of the list. So we know that um, should be very simple, uh, almost beginner level kind of stuff. So pause the video here and try and implement this class. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at it. Um, so let's walk through this now. So I'm going to create my new class, which is list.java be public class of called list and then there's two um, properties first node uh, and the last node we'll create the constructor which at the moment accepts no arguments and just sets uh, first node and and uh, last node to null That looks all good. And so then the only other um, function we had to implement was the to string. So we're going to return a string. We don't receive any arguments. Uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to have to pass through each one, uh, each element within the list. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to create a kind of temporary variable which stores the current node that we're currently printing out. So the data type will be list node. We'll call it current. And initially, we'll set it to the first node. Right. Uh, then what we're going to have to do is uh, create a string which we can keep uh, adding our data to, and then we can print the entire string. So let's create a new string. Um, and it will be blank initially. And now if we want to iterate through the um, list, then we're going to have to obviously use a while loop. Uh, we're going to start with first node and then keep going to the uh, current dot, uh, next node. Uh, so how do we know when to end? Well, when we get to the end of the list uh, the in the last node, uh, then the dot next property, which should be pointed to the next node, is going to be equal to null. So we know when to stop because current node will be equal to null. So essentially, we will keep running and iterating through the list when current is not equal to null, i.e. before we get to the end of the um, end of the list. So um, how do we iterate? Well, very simple. We just, once we've done everything we want to do, uh, we say current dot, uh, current, sorry, is equal to current dot next. What this is doing is it's changing the current, uh, the temporary current list, the temporary list node called current to the next one in the list. And we'll keep hopping from the beginning all the way through the list to the very last node, at which point uh, current the next will be equal to null. So current will be equal to null. Therefore, this while loop will exit. And at that point, we should return the string to be printed. So the last thing we need to do is actually update that string so we just uh, we're saying string is equal to string plus, and then the to string function. We want to access the the data of the current node. Um, sorry, no, we don't want to do that. We want to of the current node call the to string function. So remember that our list node class has a to string function here, thirteen to nineteen. Uh, which just uh, converts the data to a string, regardless of, it, of its type. So we're going to call that. One last thing we want to do is uh, maybe add a separation. So we will do a new line after each element. Otherwise, all the lists will be um, just printed on one line with no spaces. 
It could be a new line or it could be a tab, whichever you prefer. So let's look through this. We created our properties, first and last node. We created our constructor and our two string function. So very basic. If we go back to main, we should have every imp everything implemented now. So this line should run. And just one last reminder that this is the wrong way to use the list, but we're just doing it so we can build it up bit by bit. So let's run it, see if it works. So we're expecting to see um, 34 and then high. Fantastic, good. So we are able to read uh, the first and last node and set it, and then the two string works nicely. So let's now move on to section four. Uh, and it's a nice example of why I got us to implement the two string function first off, because it allows us to actually test this code as we go through. Uh, without it, it's very hard to tell if you've actually done the right thing. Okay, so section four, let's uncomment this code and see what's going on. Essentially, when we look through it, we're using our list class and we need to implement two functions, the insert at front and the insert at back function. Let's comment out insert at back to start off with, so we can focus on insert at front. And essentially what insert at front should do is it should take the past uh, data, create a list node and append it to the front. Uh, very simple. So then how do we actually implement this insert at front function? So let's work through theoretically uh, what we actually need to do. So we've got our uh, list, let's say, which we'll implement with these dots. So each black dot is a uh, individual node and each arrow is, is essentially dot next. It's pointing to the next node. And we've got our new uh, bit of data, our new node, which we want to insert. So there are two situations first off we need to consider. Uh, first off, the list could be empty. Okay, if the list is empty, uh, then essentially we can just define first node is equal to new node uh, and we'll set the new node so that dot next is equal to null. That's so that we know we're at the end of the list. Equally we can also say uh, last node is equal to uh, new node into our new node that we're inserting. That's the simplest case. The other case we have to do is when it's not empty. So in this case, our uh, list may already look like uh, this, in that we already have some elements there, and this is referred to as first node, and this one is referred to as last node. So how are we gonna do this? Well, step number one, we need to actually create our new node. So here's new node, defined by n. And at the moment, that new node isn't actually attached into the list. Once we've created that new node, we want to link it to what is currently our first node. So, we've got our new node, we'll do we'll set dot next to be equal to first node, so that we get our our links into the list. That's good. Our node is now inside the list. The only problem is is that uh, our first node uh, variable is outdated. It's wrong. We need to update it. So step three we then define our new node as the first node. Okay. And then this is still last node. So you may think like, uh, well, why didn't, uh, you, well, you may be tempted when you're implementing it to actually do step three first instead of step two. Uh, do not do that. It won't work. If you first, if you update um, what the first node is beforehand, uh, then you lose your reference to first node. So you essentially won't be able to do that linking anymore because you don't know, uh, you've, you've essentially lost where this node is. So do not do that, okay? If, you, if you're going to, you can try and you'll get stuck, you won't be able to do it. So instead, we've got to follow these three steps. Create the new node, link it to the first node, and then redefine the first node. So let's go back to the code, let's do that. We'll go back to our list and we'll implement our uh, insert at front, front function, uh, and we should be receiving an object of data. Okay, so first thing we've got to do is uh, create our new node. 
view node is equal to new list mode. Actually, let's grab that. We won't do that first. First, we will check which of the two situations in. Is the list empty or is it not? So we'll do uh, if first node is equal to null, then we know it's empty. List empty. Else list not empty. Simple, OK? So remember, if list is empty, all we need to do is set to first node equals the new node. So first node is equal to new this node. Our data, it's just data. And we can pass uh, the next node, which is going to be null. Uh, equally, uh, we can update last node. Last node is equal to, again, our new node, which is now first node. Great. Um, what if the list isn't empty? Well, remember our three steps that we have to do. First, create the new node. Second, attach uh, the new node to the first node, the old first node, and then finally update our first node. So before I have a go at that, why don't you pause it here and try and implement those three steps yourself uh, in the else statement and give that a go as an exercise. I'll leave this up here for you just in case it's useful. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. Let's, let's, let's implement these then. So first thing, create the new node. So new node, we'll just call it new node. Is equal to new list node. Data. And then what is going to be, so we created our new node at that point. We need to point to uh, what the next node is going to be. And if you remember in our step two, the next node is actually the first node. A bit misleading but it's because the first node uh, is, is, is um, outdated now. So we'll say first node. So what this line is doing, it's creating our new, new node, so step one, and it's also linking the old first node to the, the dot .next property of the new node. So the final thing then is we need to update that first node variable. First node is now equal to new node. Fantastic. So insert the front, very simple. We've done that. Uh, if it's empty, just put it straight in at the first node and also the last node. Uh, if, it, if it's uh, not empty, then we have to create a new node, link it to the old first node and redefine what the first node is. So let's run this. And what should we expect to see? We should expect to see uh, test one and then an integer and a 3.14. So the order will actually be reversed. Uh, let's check whether that's the case. Three point one four integer thirty four test one good uh, and of course I didn't redefine I didn't empty the list so we still have our pre old previous terms which are thirty four and that high so what we can see is we had the old list and then we kept adding to the front so next then final exercise is to uncomment this and to implement that insert it back front. Uh, again, take a, take a pause the video here and have a play around, see if you can implement that algorithm yourself. If you're getting stuck, resume, I'll go through the algorithm as I did an insert at front, and then you can try and implement it yourself. So pause here if you're gonna give it a go. Okay, good, so let's discuss the algorithm then, if you uh, had something similar. So actually, it's really similar to what we were doing before. Um, if it's Again, we have two conditions, whether it's empty, if it's not empty. If it's empty, then actually, this is exactly the same. We don't have to change anything. Uh, we can essentially just call the insert uh, at front function, if you want to be uh, very snazzy about it, rather than re-implementing that. Alternatively, if it's not empty, uh, then we have to slightly change this uh, implementation. But again, it's very similar to what we were uh, doing previously. So step number one, acknowledge that we have uh, our list with first node and last node. 
Uh, step number one again is to create that uh, new node. If you remember from insert at front, we then have to link. Now the interesting thing was in insert at front, we had to redefine the link of the new node. Now in this case, obviously that is, should actually be going to null because we're inserting it back. So the question then is, which link do we have to update? Well, in this instance, it's the link of the last node. Okay, so set to redefine that link for the last node, which currently it will be set to null. This time we're going to set it to our new node. So we're going to do the label link. So the first node, last node, link to new node. And then finally, we have to redefine last node. Okay, so slight variation, um, but very similar to what we did for inserts at front. So again, pause, try and implement that yourself. Uh, and then if, if you get stuck or want to check, resume the video. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that implementation. Let's uh, now walk through how to do that. So we'll go to our list uh, and we're going to create that new function, insert uh, at the back. Oof, bit of a typo, come on. Sorry, it's terrible. Again, we're going to be passed object data, which is the thing we want to insert. So we, again, we've got those two checks. We want to check whether the list is empty. So we'll check if first node is equal to null. which would mean list is empty. Otherwise, else, if that isn't the case, then list is not empty. So remember we said that if list is empty, we're essentially doing the exact same thing we're inserting at the front. So we can be a bit sneaky and cool that insert at front function and just pass data. You probably want to do that because again, that's demonstrating good object oriented programming, uh, code reuse, that kind of thing. So that's probably the, the neatest way of, of, of doing that. When we get to the list is not empty, uh, remember our three steps. We first have to create the node and then link it and then redefine what the last node is. So let's create that new node. It's equal to new list node. Send the data that we want to store in it. And then where, where, where do we want to point for the next node? Well, if we're inserting at the back of the list, obviously that's not going anywhere. So we'll set it to null so that we know that we've uh, got to the end of the list. So that's step one, we've created our new node. Remember then updating the um, the next pointer. In uh, This time we're updating the last node. Okay, we're not updating new node, we're updating last node. So we're gonna do step two now and say last node dot next is equal to our new node, which means we've now completed that step two. Finally, step three, uh, we need to redefine the last node to update it. Fantastic, so that's your insert at back function implemented. If we run it, what should we see? What we should see now is our previous array, as we had, section four, um, followed by back one, back two, attended to the back of the list. So it should be underneath 34 and high. What I am gonna do just quickly is print a couple of lines um, so that we can see a separation. Otherwise, we, we, we won't be able to, it will be a bit messy. So let's run that and see if it worked. Good, so we've got our previous list 3.14, 34, test one, 34, 2.14, test one, 34, high, and then back one, back two, attended to the back. So well done, fantastic. You have implemented a list node and you've implemented a list class and you've implemented the two important functions, insert at front, insert at back. Uh, so that's the most basic notions of list nodes and lists implemented. Um, what you, the remainder of the exercises would, uh, you should do from now on is to try and implement an ordered list, whereby rather than inserting at front or insert at back, you have a generic insert function, uh, which inserts your new data um, in some ordered way. So if it's an integer, you might do from smallest to largest. If it's a string, you might do it based on the alphanumeric order. So uh, numbers first and then letters, for example, that kind of thing.
Uh, much more complicated, but you should give it a go.